I've got a lot of data now. I am, however, not happy with the steady state results, right? Fundamentally, I have learned something about this system to, that changes what I want to do about it. And this is something that makes it so difficult to do things like, quote, jobs, is because I don't know what I'm going to find out the first run through, right? I want to run the first one to know better questions to ask. And so for this one, a better question to ask would be, how long does it take before that gets up to that max temperature, right? So I'm going to basically refine this study by creating a new study. We'll clone this one, and I'm going to say free convection transient. Now this is a little bit different than what I would normally recommend for people, uh, but again, this is, this is kind of a webinar for experts. Uh, if you're brand new to this, I would say create a brand new study, transient, and then you know look at the values that it's going to give you, because changing from steady state to transient uh, involves quite a few different changes. Let's look at the first couple. So for the general settings, uh, obviously I have to come in here and turn on time dependent. Now normally when you create a new study, it'll say time dependent, and then it'll say total time and time step. It does not show that here because right now we're not in this uh, same place. Uh, so that value is actually moved over to another area called the calculation control options. So if you right click and put data calculation control options, this is everything you need to know about the solver. And this, you can get to this dialog while the solver's going on, and we actually will in a second. But for a steady state study, you use goals convergence. We discussed that earlier. For transient, goals basically don't do many things because a transient study, the goal never really converges. Like it, it can, but they're really just for information only. Okay? Um, you could use that if you felt like it. You also have travels. Travels are, just kind of think of it as how long it takes for some kind of a flow phenomenon to traverse a volume. So traversing a volume, um, you know, would take longer or, or would, would take more or less time depending on the viscosity or the density or the size of the domain, uh, things like that. I don't want to do that one either. I'm curious about physical time. And I don't know how long it's going to take, but I have a guess that it's going to take about, it's not an hour, let's do 10 minutes. 10 minutes is 600 seconds physical time. That's how long I want it to run. And I don't want it to stop till it gets to 10 seconds or 10 minutes. And once it gets there, then stop. All right? Now, if you create multiple finishing criteria, you can tell it which ones you want it to use. Um, in this case, I, for, for transit, I just want to know what it looks like 10 minutes in. Uh, the only thing, other thing I want to really look at is the saving. You want to save the result files, and it's going to create a bunch of iterations. I don't need a bunch of result files. Transient always saves one, or no, steady state always saves one. Transient, you want to save periodically, and my default is always periodically by time. And for 600 seconds, I'd want my period to be, let's just say, two seconds. No, let's say five seconds. It's a good period. So every five seconds, take a measurement and, and keep the results. And I can use that for uh, result plots and everything like that. So now, in theory, I have now converted this from a steady state to a transient study. 